Okay, guys, we got this 2011 Suzuki uh, SX4, I think it is. And the issue is, when it came in, it didn't have Freedom. I recharged it. I was trying to find a leak, ran out of time because I had to leave for vacation. So I recharged it with the customer. And then they said that their AC, they told me they had a leak and they had to bring it back. Then uh, they waited a while. Then they said the AC wasn't working at all. So then I uh, I had hooked uh, my gauges up and I noticed that this thing is spiking way up. Let's see if it's doing it now. Okay, so we got like 95, 90 PSI, I guess on both sides. Yeah, 90 on both sides. Let's say 104, not a big deal. But I think the thermal expansion valve might be stuck on here. Because they said the AC works sometimes and then it doesn't. That's what it was doing on me. I didn't have time to mess with it. Let's put this on. Let's see what happens. This is not even on now. Uh, it says this is on. Turning on now. Let me get a diagram on how this works. So now we have. No AC. Okay guys, so I noticed on the diagram we have this uh, evaporator temp sensor right here. Now, I don't see that in my sand data right here, and it says it goes to the ECU, so I'm going to... I'm going to grab a different scan tool and see if another scan tool shows it. Well, I was looking at all my temps. Anything with a temp over here. And then I don't see it. I also was wondering like, if they called it like intake air temp, like if they might have two, like one for the engine and one for inside the car. That one says 95. But I don't see it. I don't see it. So I'm going to grab a different scan tool real quick. Hey guys, so I looked in the launch here, I'll tell, and the snap one. And I don't see this uh, evaporator temperature uh, switch. So what I'm going to do with the sensor. So what I'm going to do is, diagram says it's at the ECU. The ECU is right there, so it's not hard to get to. So I'm going to try to back probe these wires, and uh, we'll see if we can... We will see if we can, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, see what our reading is. So it looks like it's going to be uh, white and orange wire. So I'm going to look for these, and then... Uh, Hopefully, we can prove that. And then uh, we're going to have to also figure out what's going on with our pressures. We got a clock. Uh, uh, we got a clogged. Uh, clogged uh, or stuck thermal expansion valve. Hey guys, so this is kind of a mess because the pinouts are backwards. So uh, I back probed. The ECU down there. You can see the probes going in the back of the ECU. I'm on the orange and the white and black wire. And actually, right now I'm just on the uh, uh, 
I don't know which one I'm on. I'm on one of the sides and we only got, we got zero volts. If I move to the other side. Uh, let's see. Cause it should be pulling the voltage down. Let's go to this yellow one right here. So the blue one. If I go to this side, my ground's good right here. We have 0 0.3 volts. So 0 0.3 on both sides. So we should have a voltage reading. So that's why our AC compressor or our AC compressor is not turning on. Don't know if I can get to the because I'd like to bypass this. Um, uh, I'm gonna pull this EC out and do a resistance measurement. Okay guys, so I came across this video online that shows the evaporator temperature sensor location. So I was like, man, I can get to this. Like I saw, let's see, they go and put the evaporator in right here. And you see them put the wire on right here. And they stick it in and they route it down the side. And I'm like, huh, I think I can get to that. Then I saw when they flipped it over right here, you can see the wire sticking out. And that's on the bottom of the heater box. You can see uh, the blower motors right here. And the connector's right here. And I'm like, oh, I think I can get to that. So I came out to the car, and I can get to it. So I'm going to go underneath the dash. I'm going to get this ECU put back in. Uh, I'll show you what I did. I got my Bill's probes put in here. And uh, that's the connector for the evaporator temp sensor right there. So and then I, I used my Bill's probes. And I'm on the wires. You can see the wires pierced there. And this one's pierced here. So there's the white one. So let me get my probe on, or my lap scope on here, and we'll see what our voltage is doing. Okay, guys, we got 3.2 volts here. Three point five volts. Did our AC compressor come on now? No, no AC compressor here now. We got 3.5. I don't know if 3.5 is good or bad. That's what we are measuring right here. Just want to check this connector. I gotta look to see if there's a spec on this. Let's put it to heat, see if our voltage changes. So the voltage is going up with me having the heat on right now. I don't know why we couldn't measure it out there at the computer unless it wasn't making a good connection. Let's put this down. Let's go cold. See if our... I don't know what a normal voltage. To me, 3.6 would probably be about normal. Because uh, the sensor probably goes from 0.5 volts to... to uh, 1 point. I mean, to it probably goes from 0.5 volts, like a half a volt, to 4.5. Let me go look, see if there's a spec. Okay, guys, so I found a spec here. So, uh, 32 degrees is 6.6 .6 to 6.6 thousand .6 ohms. 77 is 2.0 to 2.1. So, I'm gonna go unplug it and we'll do a resistance check. Okay, guys, so I'm probed into it right here. Check my stuff. Make sure we got a good connection. Um, we're at uh, 10.7 kilo ohms. Let's go. I'm gonna go and look at the spec again, guys. That's why it's not working. Look at this. We're be it thinks it's below 32 degrees. We're freezing at that point. This needs an evaporator temperature sensor. 
Okay guys, so I dialed this in to 2.2 kilo ohms right here, which I think was like 77 degrees. So I just gotta connect the red and black right here up to my probes and then connect this back up to the car and then I think we should be able to fire up our AC. Okay guys, I got that connected up right there. So let's start this up, see what happens. I heard the compressor turn on. Let's see what our pressures do. So they're on. Look at that, compressor's on. So I'll let this run for a little bit. We'll see how it gets inside. I think that evaporator temp sensor was failing. I just don't know if it'll cause any other issues. Well, we'll let this run for a little bit on full cold. And we'll see what happens here. Because our pressure switch should uh, control our cycling if our pressures get out of hand. Okay guys, so right now it's like, what, 85 degrees or so outside here? Oh, there you go, you can see it. I just put the temperature sensor in, uh, so it's, it's still dropping. It's down to 60. So, uh, 59, it's still dropping. So we'll let that sit there, 59. Um, everything else seems to be working. Uh, this seems to be working. So maybe the issue is just the evaporator temp sensor. So we'll find out what they want to do. Okay guys, this has been running for a while. Pressure still look good. Let's see what we're at inside here. Temp wise, oh this shut off. 53 degrees. I'm okay with that. Windows open. Close the doors. And uh, I'll just let this run. Okay guys, so the car's been running, we're at 48 degrees. So uh, that's definitely what the issue was. Bad, uh, it's a bad, uh, what do you call it, a bad uh, evaporator temp sensor. Okay guys, so what I did on here is I put a resistor in here and it'll make the car probably think that the evaporator temperature sensor is at like what? Uh, uh, well, we'll make it say like 77 degrees or something. So this should uh, keep this compressor working. Just heard the compressor turn on. So we'll be able to see that on the scan tool here. Let me ID this vehicle. I'm gonna tape this resistor up and then that should be good to go. Okay guys, so the resistor is taped up right here. So we'll just let that hang up there. Just tuck this back here. Actually, uh, let's see, can I put this somewhere? Uh, probably put it back where it was supposed to be. that on without that other wire. Oh, oh yeah, I can. But I think this will be working. This lady's a really good customer of mine. She just bought this car not that long ago. And uh, I don't want to, like she doesn't have money to fix it. And I don't want her to get like, uh, I don't want her to have to deal with the heat all summer. A lot of cars don't have evaporator temp sensors. I told her like there could be some side effects, like it could freeze up or something. Okay, guys, so that's all taped up in a way, and uh, the car's been running. You can see our pressure sensor. So the pressure sensor should cycle the ignition. Uh, I mean, not the ignition. It should cycle our uh, uh, what do you call it? Our compressor if there's any issues. So I hope you guys like this video. I'm just trying to help out a good customer. See you later.